My God, I hate drugs. My God, I hate drugs. of social media is undeniable. Now politicians are capitalizing on it, especially during elections. I'm Ruth Cabal. This is On The Record. And, and joining us in this episode, we have Tonio Cruz, a blogger and columnist of the Manila Bulletin. Also joining us live here in the studio is PJ Tanglao, a first-time voter and member of Akbayan Youth. And later on the phone, we speak to Commission on Elections spokesperson James Jimenez. Good evening to you, gentlemen. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening. Okay, uh, going back to 2016, the presidential elections, it was um, hailed by a lot of people as the first uh, parang social media elections in the Philippines. So now, 2019, we have just midterm elections, walang uh, boboto for president. But how do you see the role of social media with the Maypoles, uh, Tonyo? I think uh, the, we, we won't move away from, from what's happening outside of social media. Mm -hmm. uh, social media is, uh, refers to two things, like first, it's a set of me media mm -hmm. tools that are available for politicians, uh, candidates, and the public, and other, and even media. Mm -hmm. And then the second, the second part about social media is that it's also an arena. Things happen mm -hmm. online, mm -hmm. or things are made to happen online. So uh, how the candidates, the different interest groups, businessmen, mm -hmm. and the public would would see social media we have we have to sit back for a moment and take a look who's most prepared mm -hmm. uh, uh, right now uh, well for the past two two to three years it is the administration that is most prepared and and they are taking full advantage of both legacy or traditional media and digital mm -hmm. so um, we have yet to see uh, trailblazing attempts to make uh, uh, social media and the elections in general mm -hmm. a little bit more level or even for all the participants. Mm -hmm. Pero kasi na, di ba, parang ito yung pinakamagandang medium kasi it's, you know, free, well, free, somewhat free and or cheaper than the traditional political ads like you see on TV uh, or... Yes, I, I, I agree somewhat mm -hmm. but uh, Philippine elections mm -hmm. are not held online. Yeah. Uh, and Philippine elections up until today, they're, they're dominated by guns, goons and gold. And it's the same thing, somewhat online. For guns, you could get li uh, you could get libel suits, uh, you could get uh, harassment suits. Uh, goons, there are mm -hmm. trolls. Yeah. There are yes. entire armies of trolls. Mm -hmm. And uh, for gold, there's dirty money, dirty money that go into uh, influencers, Facebook groups, and other entities online that wish to portray their candidate mm -hmm. as leader. So uh, there's a good example presented by PCIJ. Mm -hmm. One of the uh, um, poorest candidates mm -hmm. yeah. is actually spending. Uh, is the highest spender for the yeah for the TV uh, ads, both and online yeah. and offline. Uh -huh. okay. and, and although this candidate is has the uh, smallest footprint digitally, yeah. he's the most talked about. Engagement, Why? yeah. Why? Uh -huh. Because uh, there's still the problems offline have have migrated online. Mm -hmm. So yun nga, yung guns, guns and gold, yung... yung May version din pala siya online, yeah, ano? Yes, so oh, oh, hindi, oh. hindi I, I don't think we could harbor a fantasy about uh, social media as uh, very different. Uh, being tools, mm -hmm. it depends on the user, on who uses it. Yeah. So if right now, uh, certain candidates use it to disinform, mm -hmm. uh, that's bad. Yes, uh, of if the better candidates, uh, however we define better, don't make full use of social media, uh, that's a problem. Uh -oh. So, it, um, kailangan mal malinaw yun, hindi, hindi magic uh, bullet yung social media. You still have to have a message yes. that would uh, animate the public. Uh, sa ngayon, uh, Wala pang bagong narratives eh. Wala parang pang sinasabi mo, it can make or break a candidate, di ba? Um, yes, on, maybe online. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Maybe online. Uh, tanongin natin si PJ. PJ is a first-time voter. So, anong mga ginagamit mo sa social media? Well, usually, there are the, ba the basics. Oh. The Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. But now, it's a different uh, ball game. I could mm -hmm. say that 
um, the traditional uh, the polit the traditional political playbook mm -hmm. is turned upside down already. In fact. Um, I'm, I personally am targeted by several candidates, for example, through the use of Facebook ads, which yes. has, for example, geographical targeting, or even by the means that the pages that I like, or even uh, by the people that I'm connected with. And now, um, as a first-time voter, there's, the, obvi there's obviously this overwhelming amount of information that's trying to compete for my attention, mm -hmm. as a millennial especially, given that I'm a first-time voter. And that um, I think there should be a way, by, there should be a means by which people at my age, mm -hmm. for example, can comprehend yeah. particular political policies. And now you can see that, for example, in terms of the content they're creating, uh, it uses particular langu uh, the la language that we use. That's why, for example, a chunk of, um, in the 2016 elections, a chunk of the voters that voted for the president currently right now is... Uh, made up of young people who are, for example, uh, who are well-versed in social media, but the language used was, for example, uh, memes or even uh, mm, okay. uh, me, uh, posts or even content that's, that we as millennials would appreciate, not through the traditional language mm. of politics, but through more uh, witty, more content, like, um, user-directed content in social media. Ang, uh, the Comalik is estimating that now we'll have about 61 million um, registered voters, but one-third are millennials 18 to 35 yes. years old. So talagang tina-target, possibly tina-target yes. politicians yung mga tulad mo. You're saying na parang mga gumagamit ng memes. Even in traditional, um, yung mga commercials, nakikita ko parang medyo youthful yung dating ng mga ibang nag-advertise na ngayon eh. Kasi tina-target talaga yung... So is that really a factor, being millennials are like one-third of the... The, the millennials, oh. if we, we, we rely on the actual definition, they're actually, they've actually voted. Mm -hmm. they, they'll be voting for the second, third time this year. So yung millennials, hindi na to bata. Mm -hmm. Botante na sila. At in many cases, they are also candidates. So it should not, be, it should not come as a surprise. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to focus on digital. Uh, when we say uh, election is digital, or the triumph yes. of digital, mm -hmm. it doesn't just refer to social media, uh, social networking. In many countries, when we say digital, the political parties are able to identify their supporters, mm -hmm. organize them online and offline, okay. so that when elec election day comes, they will be able to convert their support into actual votes. So that's like using emails yes, or your uh, databases, mm -hmm, yeah. etc. Mm -hmm. uh, that didn't happen in 2016. Here in the Philippines. Yes, uh -oh. and there, there's no indication that any candidate is doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm not so sure uh, how how the 2016 elections was labeled as the first digital elections because it's more just of not social true. media elections. Siguro uh, isang trend na nakita natin kasi kunyari, diba, we have the traditional forms like we hosted debates and kami sa CNN Philippines we had the vice presidential debates yes. and then we linked it with Facebook Live and then with Twitter. Nung time na yon alam mo ba nung VP debate we had 2,700 tweets per minute. So ganun ka active. Of, yeah. That's a triumph of CNN mm -hmm. and the other networks that uh, joined the uh, hosted the debates. Yes. But as fa for example if social media would be is truly available to voters and to grassroots candidates uh, with, with their own issues, uh, I didn't see that in the 2016 elections. Mm -hmm. It's just the media reporting, right. uh, the candidates pitching, uh, the voters didn't have a say. They didn't have a direct say on, for example, who chose the candidates? Who chose the candidates? Mm -hmm. It's just themselves and the parties. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, the po political parties and the candidates could have joined primaries, both online and offline. Mm -hmm. So we could have a more democratic way of selecting the candidates. The, but the but it was field. left to the president mm -hmm. or the leader of the opposition. Yes. So it's it's just the same as before. Mm -hmm. Sayang yung ano, sayang pa digital. Ng parties kung sino yung yes, sayang digital. Kanilato. So at the end of the day, both voters would just have this ceremonial duty of going to the polls. Yari na lahat. Uh, Pwede, pwede mag-react in public. Yes. Pwede talaga siyang mag, ano, mag, mag, gumamit ng social media to send questions to media and to the candidates. But that's, uh, that's quite limited. Yung nalilimitahan, yung kayang gawin at dapat magawa ng public 
to participate fully in the mm -hmm. electoral process. Pero kasi ngayon, like, at uh, chinek na aming research, no, at 61 out of 62 candidates actually have Facebook pages. So they're using that platform. Ikaw ba, as a Facebook uh, user, first-time voter, naghahanap ka ba? Gusto mo bang ma makaalam ng, uh, ng detalye about the, the candidates through Facebook? Do well, you I actually think, do that? I think we're underscoring the role that social media mm -hmm. or even the digital um, campaign played in the elections. In fact, we can take a look at, for example, the political landscape we're in mm -hmm. right now, where you have orchestra. You can see patterns of orchestrated uh, trolling or orchestrated mm -hmm. fake accounts that uh, Facebook was put under scrutiny. I was put under scrutiny in, and that um, personally for me, for example, it's very overwhelming to enter a political landscape wherein now the Social, social media. There are several things that are competing for my attention, mm -hmm. and that, and then now, as a millennial, I am now easily as persuaded. In fact, I think, in, I think in the 2016 elections, the reason why it was called digit, the first digital election wasn't necessarily because I, as an individual, was able to uh, was able to do something in social media, mm -hmm. but social media was able to influence my ideology, how I perceive particular things. That's why you have. Um, Mocha Usan, for example, having enough political capital mm -hmm. in order to run for co Congress right now, or even um, several influencers that are now recruited by mm -hmm. particular political personalities in order for them, for, for them to use it for their interests. Yeah, we'll talk more about that. Though. Welcome back to On the Record, our topic, social media and the elections. And we're talking about the influence of social media, expected influence, especially in this 2019 um, midterm polls. And we'll be talking to the Kamalek. Uh, it's James Jimenez. James Jimenez on the line. Sir? Hello, good evening, Bob. Yes, sir. Uh, for the first time, no, there's the rules and regulations for the campaign. Uh, this covers social media. Why do you need to the regulation of social media? We saw the effect of social media in 2016. We saw it ang lawak ng kanyang impluensya at ang kakayanan niya na, mga, na mag influence ng mga botante. At nakita din natin na dito binubuhos ng mga kandidato ang kanilang gastos ngayon sa halalan. Especially nitong pasok ng 2019, nakita ng mga kandidato kung gaano ka-effective ang social media. Ang, ang, uh, ang tendency ngayon ay ipinapasok sa social media yung mga advertising expenses nila. Ang problema po dyan, ang social media ay hindi regulated. Kung hindi siya regulated, ibig sabihin makakapagtago sila ng gastos dyan nang hindi nila kailangan i-report sa SOSE. Sa tinagal-tagal po natin nagre-require ng SOSE, wala pa pong social media ex related expenses na na -re report sa atin. Ever since 2010, 2010 medyo may social mm -hmm. media na rin naman eh. But uh, even then, from 2010 hanggang ngayon, wala pa pong social media related expenses na nire report So, kung nakikita natin, na marami ang potential na gagastusin sa social media sa 2017 at, at sa 2019 at wala tayong regulation, eh, medyo flat-footed naman po tayo nun. So kaya kami naglabas ng regulasyon ngayon. So how will this go? Kasi what I saw was yung mainly they have to register yung kanilang mga websites and uh, stuff right. like that. And then, but how will you monitor the, 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 the expenses? Meron po tayong kakayanan na malaman ang lahat ng ads na inilabas para sa kandidato. So alam natin kung uh, anong ad, anong mga aling mga kandidato ang gumamit halimbawa ng boosted post. Mm -hmm. Makikita natin 'yan. At dahil ang boosting ay possible only if you have a page, then malalaman din natin saan nang galing yung perang pang boost, kung kaninong account. Kaya po natin i-require yung mga kandidato na magbigay ng kanilang social media pages para alam natin saan tayo magsisimulang tumingin. Pero ganyan pa man, kahit na wala kang nilista sa aming URL, Malalaman at malalaman pa rin po natin kasi nga meron tayong ability to uh, check the ads, uh, the ad spend of the candidates after the elections. So yung listahan na yun, pwede natin ibangga sa kanilang social media, uh, so, so, sorry, sa kanilang sose kung saan i-claim nila kung magkano ang ginasas nila for social media advertising. But it's like a, a big world out there. I mean, the internet, right. social media. How, right. Hindi ba siya mahirap, especially what if yung supporters nila will pay for it or will sponsor the right. websites? Again, or, mm. again, we're not looking at individuals. So, we're only looking at published ads. So, kung yung published ads, ma-identify natin lahat yan, we can work our way back to who spent for it. No? So, we don't have to keep track of individual supporters and say, Aha, ngayon naglabas ka, bukas naglabas ka. Hindi. 
at the end of the whole process, titignan natin ano yung mga lumabas sa ads. And since meron pong record sa mga, ano niyan, sa mga social platforms niyan, mm-hmm. makukuha natin yung records na yon at yun ang magiging basihan natin for determining magkano ang nagastos. So this will mean na uh, parang you will you can get stuff from um, details from Facebook, magsasubmit sila sa inyo, Twitter. Yes po. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Required po sila na magsubmit sa amin ng validated report tungkol sa spending online. Okay. But on the other side, aside from yung expenses, yung how, how will you counter yung negative you know, impacts also of the use of social media with the trolls and with the, you know, negative well, or fake news and... We're not out to solve anything. Mm-hmm. Certainly, uh, very limited din lang yung, yung uh, goal natin dito. We want to monitor campaign spending, particularly with regard to content production and content uh, promotion. We're not out to solve the problem of fake news. Mm-hmm. No, Again, uh, we believe, the Comelec believes that social media regulation is a broad topic and uh, should properly be addressed by Congress in its entirety. Mm-hmm. Ang sa amin, yung focus namin ngayon, yung kaya namin i- i-monitor at kaya natin i-address. And that is spending. Okay. Pero uh, in terms of yung content, syempre wala na rin kayong uh, control over that. Even the negative wala. ads. Yeah, oo, no? Mm-hmm. But in terms of more of siguro um, on voters' education, um, mm-hmm. is there also an online effort uh, on the side naman of the Comelec? To promote well, the mind are, education. We are, yeah. online, Apo, mm-hmm. we are online, and we in fact have uh, on the air voter education with our radio program, which is also broadcast uh, on social. So, meron po tayong mga efforts to, to educate the voters uh, ongoing naman po yan. Okay. Uh, tanong ko lang yung ating mga guests dito sa studio. Tonyo, yung sinasabi ng Comelec, do you think that will work in terms of yung looking at the expenses? That would work. On social media. Oh. Yes. Uh, tulong nato natin to sa Comelec. The Comelec should be should uh, try its best to uh, sit down in dialogue with the media buying agencies, with the advertising, PR, and mm-hmm. marketing agencies, mm-hmm. because they're the ones enlisted to produce and place these advertisements uh, online and offline. So that's another trap that the Comelec should look into. Because hindi naman pweding na sa Facebook. Facebook lang at Twitter yung kakausapin niya. Mm-hmm. Pumunta na tayo dun sa parang parang TV ads. Uh, you could you could ask the advertiser, but you could also ask the advertising outlet mm-hmm. how, uh, how much uh, in money is going in from uh, advertiser. So mm-hmm. tingnan yun. Uh, mahalaga matingnan yun. Tapos uh, humingi, humingi yung Comelec ng tulong sa publiko. Uh, sana mabilis na makagawa yung Comelec ng paraan na tumanggap ng reports at maimbestigahan nila yon kasi uh, yung mga kababayan naman natin aware dun sa maraming election laws eh yes. at, at na ang bawa nagpapadala sila ng picture ng mga iba-ibang mga illegal campaign posters yeah. so oh. pwede ring mangyari yan off uh, online I don't know how this works uh, James is still with us ba no um, yes. kasi yung sa PCIJ report sinabi na gumagamit na rin daw ng influencers or uh, or people to to boost, to boost the reach and airtime. Paano i-cover? How does that work, Tonyo? And on the part of the Comelec, paano i-cover yun? Well, um, the, the, the Comelec could sit down with the candidates mm-hmm. and ask them, uh, saan pa ba kayo nag-spend? Uh, you have to disclose all ca- election-related expenses. Even the expenses. influencers. So, for example, if you hire a band, if you hire an ambassador or endorser, and you pay them, uh, that's an election ex- expense, mm-hmm. and that should be reported. And it is, yun nga yung eh, boosting. How do you do that? Uh, yung boosting, uh, yun makikita yun sa Facebook, kasi uh, Facebook could submit to Comelec some reports. Mm-hmm. But yun nga, uh, we we would like Comelec to be able to identify yung mga areas uh, kung saan nag-spend yung candidate. So malaking bagay yan. Uh, there has been a senatorial candidate who has spent money for influencers mm-hmm. for the past few months. Mm-hmm. Uh, lalaki ba yun o hindi ngayong official campaign period na we have to ask the candidate. So, so James, covered ba yung mga ganon, yung mga boosting, yung mga influencers na binabayaran? Is there actually, a way? It's, oh. in our, it's actually in already in our regulation mm-hmm. that advertisers have to submit their reports to the COMELEC. No? Kailangan sila mag-submit ng mga kontrata nila. So alam natin kung, uh, kung sino kasi nagre-report na sila ngayon. Merong mga ninja dyan, may mga guerrilla na spending dyan. Yun ang kailangan natin, uh, kailangan natin mag-employ ng means of discovery. No? But in general, especially for the legit candidates and the legit operators, 
um, meron tayong requirement for their contractors, their campaign contractors, to submit all contracts to the COMELEC. And this will cover the bulk of the spending. Mm -hmm. This includes, um, point of fact, this includes social media associates. Yan ang tawag namin mm -hmm. sa kategorya ng mga tao na ang trabaho is basically to, in to influence uh, public discussion through engagement. So that thing is, uh, yung social media associates, that's basically a spectrum, no? On the legitimate and, and, and uh, perhaps uh, super honorable end, mm -hmm. you, have your, you have your influencers, uh, the digital influencers. And then on the other, on the other end of the spectrum, the uh, maybe not so legit end, nandiyan yung mga troll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in either case, kahit saan ka dyan sa spectrum na yan, if you, if you perform services for the candidate or for the campaign, you will be required or the candidate will be required to uh, disclose yung spending made for you or made to you, yung binayad sa'yo for the campaign. And they have to, to submit a formal report, no? After, yes. Even yes. after the elections. Okay, thanks. Uh, thank you very much to Comalic spokesperson okay. uh, James Jimenez. We're taking another break on the record. Welcome back. We're talking about social media and the elections. Kanina, PJ, as a first-time voter, you mentioned na ang dami-dami ng uh, nag, nag, uh, po proliferate na ads and then not targeted to you and yeah. even the, the particular trolls. particular demographics. Yeah. Uh, is there, for a millennial, for you, is there a way na you can actually distinguish controls by ito or fake websites or? Well, to be honest, no. Uh -huh. um, there's no current, currently... Um, this actually, this election is a test with regards to our digital literacy, mm -hmm. with our online literacy, especially to my, to, um, my age bracket, given that right now, even if we are now aware that fake news is proliferating and there's the existence of trolls and mm -hmm. even particular external actors that might affect and influence our decisions, there's still no sure way of, for my age bracket or for uh, people like us, for first-time voters to differentiate whether or not uh, what's fake news or not. In mm -hmm. fact, it's contingent, heavily contingent on the capacity of the individual to be critical. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's us being generous already. Obviously, not everyone has that same capacity mm -hmm. to discern what is, uh, what is um, real or not, especially when fake news has elements of sensationalism, um, especially you create the comment section as a battleground, for example, yeah. and now it's not anymore necessarily about civil and critical discourse. It's now about um, you know, a personal attack on someone else or a personal attack so, on your emotionality. Especially in comment section, ano? Yes, yes. So, so yun nga, Tonyo, ganun na nga eh. So, sila, they're faced with that. Yung mga parang medyo vicious na mga trolls. And how, how can you use social media as, you know, to empower the voters? Kasi especially yung mga hindi naman kaya mag-bide ng political ads, they can also, yung mga candidates, they can also use that Dubai, to, to pero, communicate pa, their platform. Pero mag-yak lang sa sinabi ni mm -mm. PJ. Hindi naman, hindi naman ganun kalaki yung problema. Okay. Wala naman tayong fake news newscast eh. Mm -hmm. Our people still refer to news outlets for their news. Five of the top 20 websites in the Philippines are news websites. Uh, uh, the fake news peddlers don't have a newscast. They don't have a newspaper. And there have been surveys up until 2018 that Filipinos still trust their journalists. So, uh, as, as far as fake news is, is concerned, it is a problem, but it is not an overwhelming mm -hmm. problem facing the public. Uh, we still have CNN. Mm -hmm. We still have the many networks. So, uh, dun pa rin nag-refer yung mga tao sa balita. At uh, magandang bagay yun. Uh, uh, kung paano nalaban yung fake news, depende yan sa ating lahat. Maganda merong, halimbawa, may check.ph na binuo yung media sa ka-academ. Maganda-maganda yan, I agree with them. Pero sana mag, mag buy in yung mga mm. kandidato, mag buy in ang, ang administrasyon at ang oposisyon. Kasi mamamalat tayo mm -mm. sa kakasabi na fake news yan kung hindi sila mag agree So, yung bawa, mag -check, yung check PH, ipa-fact check yung isang kandidato, mm -hmm. pero kung yung kandidato ayaw niya dun sa check PH, di ba? Mm -hmm. Problema. So, anong pwedeng gawin ng voters to, to use social media na, you know, positively para mas maging informed sila? For uh, the elections, sorry, in mismo yung mga elections websites. are uh, well. We ref, we make individual choices, okay. but it is a national exercise. It is an organized collective national exercise. So we cannot do it alone. Uh, we have to ask our friends, our family for help. Mm -hmm. if, 
ang, ang gusto kong i-point point out dito, we have to form organizations. Mm -hmm. We have to organize ourselves. The politicians are or organized. They have coalitions and alliances. They have troll armies. They're very organized. Mm -hmm. They want to deceive you, harass you, influence you to vote in one way. So voters cannot act alone. Mm -hmm. And we have to organize ourselves. Okay. And last na lang, anong gusto mo bang makita sa mga social media sites for the elections? Well, social, I think social media sites, if ever we would want to be um, successful in terms of educating, educating people or even targeting or influencing how they think, it should be centered on their, um, the con a content by which that speaks the same language. So for example, it's uh, you market a content that's specifically catered to a particular demographic, say, uh, at this age, and then it's based on this interest. So, and maybe more of issues that yeah, will concern yeah, them. Yeah, especially. Mm -hmm. And given that um, right now, um, I actually think now we're underestimating mm -hmm. the um, presence of fake news. I think it's a big problem, especially okay. for current news established agencies, uh, current news estab establishments right now. And that um, if ever the establish the truth the truth defenders would want okay. to effectively combat fake news okay. then mm -hmm. it should be able to use um, the okay. same language and sensationalization that fake news peddlers or trollers okay. have.